Hi guys, and welcome to this episode. Not a bad view, if I don't say so myself. Keep watching, and we'll tell you where it is. So this morning was fun. So fun. So fun. Well, from yesterday afternoon, really, it's been raining where we were stayed um, at Biwa. And this morning we had to pack up a soggy camper. So that was fun. Needless to say, both of us kind of woke up a bit last night, praying the rain would stop so we wouldn't have to pack up a wet camper, but I suppose then for the break. So we got out of there, I think it was about eight o'clock this morning uh, and started making our way to our next free camp. Oh, it's not a free camp actually, it's a low cost hip camp. Wouldn't read about it, but the sun's out. So we're loving life right now. What I wasn't loving this morning though was driving through the hilly, hilly roads that surround Brisbane CBD. The way the GPS took us was very windy, very hilly, and very traffic congested, so that wasn't fun. So now I've done all the hard stuff, Dave's driving. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll see what uh, this this um, low cost camp has to offer. It's only there for one night tonight. Um, we're making our way south into New South Wales tomorrow. Yep. Yep. We sure are. But for now, enjoy the view. It is called Mount Sterling Farm Off Grid. We are staying at site number five. Um, there are five sites here. So this is us set up. Dave's just leveling out the stabilized legs, but have a crack at that. WA, what's going on? You need more places like this to come to. <sighs> Although WA does have a lot more free camps. So this is a paid camp. It's on hip camps and also on wiki camps, but you have to book via hip camps. Um, ben, the host, he is situated just a little bit further down the road um, at Mount Sterling Farm. We're there. There's another camp just here at the back. One over there. One there. And one there. So, oh, no, it's a pretty good little cracking spot. And I do believe, well, at this point in time, it's nearly, nearly 2 p.m. Um, ben said that we've, at the moment, got it to ourselves, but people do roll in later on at night. So, we'll... We'll soon find out. Okie dokie, catch a radar. Driven today, um, we made it into New South Wales. Babe, we made it into New South Wales today. New South Wales? Yeah. We made it here. Made it into New South Wales. And now I'm looking at real estate oh. in New South Wales. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very pretty drive in. Um, 
The old car didn't really like it very much going up and down the ranges though, did it? There was some pretty gnarly bits of road. Yeah, pretty gnarly bits of road, but... Um, what's the name of the camp that we're at currently? At, uh... A Tunga? A, tung a Tunga Park, I think. It's a free camp. Let me... Let me just consult the Oracle. Ow. Where's my phone? So we've pulled into Atunga Park. It's a free camp on Wiki Camps. Um, um, it has got flushing toilets. Yes. Drinkable water. Drinking water. And just a bit of an open space. I'll give you a bit of a gander real quickly like. It's a general store and fuel just over the road there. Bonus. Um, but yeah, so we're set up here for tonight and there's probably two, three, five other campers here currently. Um, great little spot. There's some moo cows over in that paddock there. Um, well, there was when we first pulled in. So hopefully we'll see them again in the morning. But for now, we're just going to settle in and Dave's going to buy some real estate. Apparently buy some real estate. So whilst he's perusing the real estate, I'll uh, start getting ready for a shower, I feel, and then we're going to have a pretty, pretty early night off to, where are we off to tomorrow? Lake St. Clair. Lake St. Clair. We have been talking about going back to camp at Lake St. Clair for... Over a decade. Yeah, over a decade. So that's where we're heading tomorrow for three glorious nights and I can't wait. legends we told you before that we would let you know where we are currently welcome to Lake St Clair in New South Wales now this place has got a little bit of uh, a memory for Dave and I we came here uh, probably about 15 years ago on a day trip we actually flew over from WA um, to go and check out the Hunter Valley for some work um, which didn't eventuate we didn't end up moving over here but we did stumble across Lake St. Clair on that visit. And I said to Dave, if we ever have the opportunity to come back and camp here, I wanna do it. So we've been pulled up here for the last three days. This is the view from our camper window. It's not, not a bad view to wake up to. So this camp itself, um, it's Thursday today, I think. Yes, it's Thursday today and it is relatively busy for a weekday so I can only imagine that throughout the school holidays, um, public holiday periods, it would be pretty packed out. Now I'll flip the camera around and show you where Dave and I are parked up. We are on one of eight powered sites. We are currently on site number six. So there's camp. Site number six is here and you can see it is a little bit raised and it is raised again on this side so larger vans and things, if you bring larger vans into a powered site here, you probably might not have the ability to pop out your, uh, your awning or your annex um, because they are so close together. Older style amenities, there are two amenities blocks. Um, they do operate on a push button system because they are on rainwater around here. So the button pops in and out. It is actually quite annoying, but we understand 
why they do it. Let's try to try to limit the showers. Uh, there is a dump point here. There is no available drinking water. You have to go into Singleton or collect it on your way if you are on your way in. If you do happen to go into Singleton, it's not suitable for caravans or, or towing. We were lucky that we have a tank on the car that we could fill up, but there's no room for um, any vehicles to tow or anything like that. So yeah, we've been pulled up here for the last three days, just enjoying life on the road, really. Um, and what wouldn't you enjoy about that? You can see all these people scattered along this um, bank here. It's unpowered, free, free camping. Um, you still have to pay for it. There's a boat ramp just down the side there, but then over the other side as well, so yeah, over this side as well, you can see there's people just scattered along the bank. So, very popular spot. Knowing that there's only a few toilets and showers here, it does pay to be able to be self-contained. Now, we are self-contained. We do have a ensuite on our boat rack that does drop down and we use that for toilet and um, shower facilities. But where we're currently parked, because we are kind of on an embankment, not really suitable, um, would be okay if you're in a fully self-contained van or, any, or something like that. Um, that's why we've chosen not to use our own facilities and, and use the amenities provided. If you ever get the opportunity to come out to Lake St. Clair in New South Wales, take the time. It's probably about 16 k's out of Singleton. Very windy roads, very, very pretty. We've been swimming in this lake um, on and off for the last few days and today it's just been refreshing. That it's been about 32 degrees today. The wind has picked up, um, so it's just been super refreshing. You can go fishing in there, off the banks, or in a boat, obviously. I would have thrown up the drone, but there are regulations with the New South Wales Waterways Commission planning, whatever it's called, and I'm not about to cop a $44,000-ish fine for that. So unfortunately, no drone footage. I'll see if I can find some on the interwebs, and if I can, I'll insert it now. Taking us to Glenny's Creek Dam. Uh, so this is this dam is the reason that Lake St. Clair actually exists. It's quite a big dam. I didn't realise how big it was. You hear running water down there. Yeah, it's quite a drop down there. It's a terrible view though, honestly. This place is the worst. Horrible. There was a sign back there that mentioned about how many litres the dam holds versus the spillway and all that stuff. All that fun jazz. It is pretty around here. What a beautiful spot. It'd be lovely to be camping around this lake somewhere. It would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> This lake is actually pretty big. I think it's um, half the size of Sydney Harbour. So from here, we can't even see where we're camping. It's around the corner further. What are your thoughts? It looks very inviting for a swim. For a swim? I'm definitely going for a swim. I feel as though there might be a swim in our future. Hopefully there isn't any note ropes in this water facility. There's fish there apparently. There's fish? Mm. I like it's your chair. It's an angry geese. It's an angry geese. Mm. Fun little spot. I was not expecting this. No. So, we were just relaxing over there, halfway across the dam, and a couple had come up and mentioned a little bit further up um, that there was a family cemetery and to go and have a look. So, this is the Richards Family Cemetery. So the site was provided by the Water Resource Commission in the memory of the persons interred in the St. Clair Cemetery. There you go. It's a pretty fantastic view. I don't know if I can take much more of this horrible atmosphere. Horrible scenery? This terrible scenery? It's terrible. 
Quit your jobs, they say. Go travelling Australia, they say. It'll be fun, they say. <laughs> I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm not either. Anyway, go for a walk back across the, the dam. We'll go back to camp. And go back to camp and maybe have a swim. Possibly. Swimming buddy. Well, all right then. I mean, <laughs> very graceful, babe. Yeah. I just have to. <laughs> How good is this, Papa? This is <laughs> living, Barry. <laughs> Does your life suck? Oh, right now? No. How's my babe? Oh, I'm living life. <laughs> <laughs> this is just delightful. Doing like this weird doggy pedal. <laughs> Crocs don't help at all. Because your they feet do, float. They do when you touch the floor. When you're walking, yes, into water, fantastic. But they float. So when it comes to swimming, because I'm a shit house swimmer, I will drown. It gets deep real quick because I'm not that far from the, the shore and I still can't touch a floor. Oh, yeah. I've just touched it. Just touched it. This is where I freak out because my feet touch things and I can't see what it is. The plant just touched my foot. <laughs> So where are we? Forbes. Forbes. So we're here for four nights. We have no idea what's in Forbes. Apparently there's some bush ranger graves. Which would be pretty cool. Yeah. When we went on a cruise last year, I listened to an author and he was talking about Ben Hall and the Ned Kelly fortune. Um, and a lot of it seemed to be based around this area. So we're going to have a look around and see if we can find a bush ranger. And if not, I'll become a bush ranger. <laughs> But, I don't know, we're sort of heading out, out to parks. There's a movie, I think it's called The Dish, and it's about parks here, because they used the satellite dishes here to, for communications during the 1969 moon landings. Just a interesting bit of Australian history. Let's go and have a look at a big dish. Apparently it's very rare that the dish turns this way. Mm, That's okay. why everyone's freaking out. <laughs> so we've taken a bit of a trip out from town to the cemetery because in the cemetery there are some famous bush ranger graves and this is one of them here. It's uh, Ben Hall, so he's a bush ranger shot May the 5th, 1865. He was part, or he was the leader of the Gardner Hall bush ranger gang. But the fascinating thing about him is he's got quite a, um, is it a folklore thing about buried treasures and things about him. But the interesting thing is that he was actually not held responsible for any deaths, although the, uh, his associates were. Which is very unusual for a uh, bush ranger of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the guy. Isn't it interesting though how someone back in 1860 or 1865 or whatever, he would have been absolutely hated by most of the population. He's now sort of revered as this... Hero. Almost a hero. Yeah. Yeah. There's also the sister of... Ned uh, Kelly? Ned Kelly. Her grave's here. Kate Foster. Sister of Ned and Dan Kelly. I can't remember what she actually passed from, but she was spoken about um, by John Donohoe whilst he was telling the tale of Ben Hall. Ben Hall. So they're all kind of intertwined in in their story. I can't remember if Ben Hall was associated with the Kelly gang at some point in time. 
And there is another grave around Re Rebecca Shields. Apparently she's like the great grandniece of Captain Cook. Yeah, somewhere along the line I'm related to a Nigerian prince and apparently he's got millions of dollars for me. <laughs> we went to the visitor's centre and they sent us out to the Big Goanna. It's an art it's installation. A sculpture so, Sculpture thing. That is quite big. I sort of wasn't expecting it to be that big. But just to give you some idea of scale, I'm six foot two. That is really impressive. Oh, this wind has picked up. We, uh, we're expecting 60 a k an hour gusts, which is not cool for us, really, but... What do you reckon? Oh, I reckon she's a bit windy today, <laughs> but it is a very impressive sculpture. All part of the uh, sculpture trail that's around the Forbes area. This is the second sculpture in the same location as well, called the Hunter. So, so it's called the Hunter. Two, two Dave's two Dave's tall. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Hunter, and um, yeah, it's a bird of prey of some sort. Hopefully, the camera's picking it up. Let's time, go back to camp. Time to seek some shelter and try and tame my hair. Nah. It's out of control. Um, Kubang Mick. So Kubang was sort of in relation to where he actually lived. Kubang. So Kubang Mick Connolly informs police of Hall's whereabouts and then Ben Hall was killed uh, soon after. But they're unsure whether Kubang Mick actually did inform the police. It does look that way when you look at the, the bank records and stuff like that. Um, it does look like he was paid to inform but there's no actual proof of him doing it. They stole a lot of stuff. So in a period of less than three years, they did over 600 robberies. They're doing multiple robberies every day. And then they'd move on to a new location and do heap more. And by the time the police presence rocked up at the location where they were just at, they were already robbing people where there was a police. And they used the telegraph system. They paid telegraph operators to get information about where the police were going to be or where, where good people to rob were going to be. Occasionally they would hold people and if they knew someone and they were in good graces with that person They they wouldn't actually rob them. They'd just say hey just hang here while we can finish a robbery from 1863 through to his death in 1865 600 robberies, but from all accounts. He was actually a really good stockman. He was very well respected, but then his wife and uh, Well a guy called James Taylor came on the scene and took his wife Kitty and their son Henry and he had nothing really to live for, so he just went and became a bush ranger. So we've just rolled on through Griffith. Griffiths. Griffiths, where we're staying for the next few nights. And we found this um, citrus sculptures. And the streets are literally lined with citrus sculptures. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. And there must be maybe, there must be at least probably 40 of them, 50 maybe these different sculptures lined up and down the street they just look like they're held together with um, elastic, bands. elastic bands but you can literally smell the oranges as you uh, get out the car which is really interesting look at that guitar that is cool <laughs> did not expect to be seeing citrus sculptures today this is the first time i've ever seen citrus sculptures <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's a really cool thing. I've... All right, let's check out some more. There's a Nina truck. Well, it's actually it's an orange truck. Orange Nino. These would have taken so much time to make. We actually come to Griffith to get our car serviced by o Owen Toyota tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they don't use oranges instead of oil. <laughs> some indication of how big this thing is. The modern man cave. It's pretty cool. Well, we're getting both our doses of vitamin D and vitamin C right now. Yeah. Look at us being all healthy and stuff. <laughs> Chimkins? <Yeah. laughs> Look at this big...
<laughs> How interesting. There are quite a few more further down the street. Just full of oranges. <laughs> It would take forever to do something like that. It's a Gigi horse! <laughs> He's an owl. That robot making noises. <laughs> you being a robot? I'm yeah. holding myself to the fullest possible use, which is all I think that any conscious entity can ever hope to do. <laughs> what do you want to say? Alright guys, thanks for watching this one. Really hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you could do us a favour, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It'll help us out. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you on the flip side.